my name is Rolf and welcome back to the channel. It's my time, let's go. Today we're going to be working on a shovel head that belongs to a friend of mine here and we're trying to figure out what the problem is. He's had a bit of problem with uh, the transmission with shifting and such and it seems to be pouring out a lot of oil. Uh, so we're going to go along and take this out and uh, see what we got to do to maybe rebuild this transmission if there's a problem there, uh, which there is. So follow us along and uh, let's get at it. So we're taking our mirror out and we're trying to have a look in there and see, but there's oil on both sides of the transmission sprocket in there. I know it's uh, hard to get a shot of because it's so dark in there, but it's definitely uh, transmission fluid dripping right off of the uh, sprocket itself. First thing we got to do here is get the uh, primary plug out, drain plug, which is a three quarters of an inch head on it. So we start by disassembling some of the parts and pieces that have to come off in order to get the transmission out. So the first thing of course is going to be our primary case. Always pay attention to spacers or washers or things like that that are might be in place. Could have been put on there by the owner or a previous mechanic to try to take up slack in the floorboards. So since we're going to be at the primary and everything, it's a good time to disconnect your battery. Don't want anything firing up or rolling over because of an accidental spark. Well, let's put all your nuts and screws back on. Undo this little spot because this is where the starter relay is hooked onto underneath. There we go. All right, get that kind of loosened up. Still can't. Get at all the starter bolts with the oil tank in there. So I think we'll go around and change the oil, uh, drain the oil out, and go on from there. So we use a, a 7 8 socket to get the uh, oil plug out. Next we're going to disconnect the solenoid. You can pay attention to your connections here when you take them apart. The long stud on this one is going over to the starter. Short stud. Oh, it should be going over to the battery, really. We're gonna put our, just one of these steel jam bars in here, in the primary case, between the two sprockets. And that should enable us to break this nut loose, we're hoping. We'll give it a try and see.
some Teflon tape on our oil plug here and we're just going to put it back in the oil tank so like no more drips out all over me when I'm trying to move the oil tank around and I won't forget where the plug is. chain tensioner Let's pull out on it so that the uh, piece in behind hooks up in the grooves and you're able to take the nut off or else you just spin and spin and spin take that off okay now we're going to take the clutch part clutch basket out here and then we can pull the whole assembly out um, we've got a few things to do in there, but we'll start with this. So we loosen off the, the clutch adjustment screw. Like that. Then we can back this screw out quite a ways, but not off. Then we have these little pieces. Uh, that was the top stem thing off an old springer and this is a, a, a valve spring collar It'll fit right over that a little washer then we tighten that up until we start compressing the, the springs enough to compress them and now we can take these five studs off in some cases you might have three depending on the year if it's original equipment and uh, a lot of stuff is upgraded to the five stud which gives you a more even pull on your clutch and helps it work better now with that done we can pull our whole pressure plate right out and when we go to put it back in it's just the reverse and the springs all stay in place if you were to take all those nuts off and the springs out uh, you would have to align all this again and uh, that, can, that can be a pain we'll just start taking our, our clutch plates out and inspecting them definitely getting getting worn down we'll try to take them out and Place them the, the same way they came out. While we're in here, we inspect the fingers on the clutch hub for grooves and wear, which uh, these ones are getting worn. And I'll mention it to him. He can decide what he wants to do, but there's some pretty good grooves in there. That will cause your clutch plates to hang up on those. Quite out. This is a special tool for holding your clutch plates in place. It's just an old clutch plate, and it's uh, bolted on to about a four foot piece of metal. And with this, we can slide this onto the clutch hub. So, and because our clutch hub nut is left hand thread, this will hold the hub central so we can get it off. But first, before this, this clutch hub nut comes off of the inside, there's a, a little tab in there with ears bent over to lock that nut. And if you're not looking for it, you may not see it. But what you have to do is get in and unlock those tabs. You can see it without that in there. Then I need a little hammer. So they're quite tight in there. Sometimes you take a smaller screwdriver that's a little bit sharper just to slip between the nut and the tab. It will help you get that tab bent back and started. I think that's all of them. Now we put our little tool on there. Set it down so it's braced like that. It's left hand thread, so we want to go to the right to release it. Oh, yeah. 
She's on there. Get a little more leverage on it. That's the, the large nut that's in there. These seals on the end help keep it from leaking. Now, we need to pull that puppy. Pull that puppy out. So at this time, the clutch push rod is still sticking out here. And if everything's right on the other side, I should not be able to pull that rod out. And I can't. It's, it's hooked means the bearings are hooked on the other side. So this type of puller has a hole in the center of it and that will allow this to go on over that shaft. Just find the right place to fit that right up against there. Now we'll take our clutch hub nuts and we'll just put those back on. These all want to be in about the same position and we want a nice even pull on this. Because uh, they can be a little hard at first and appear like they're not going to come off. But they will. And already I've made a mistake. So we're just going to take these off. Need our tool again. This time we're going to be going in a in a clockwise rotation. So we're going to put it on the on the other side over here. Tool back on. And they're hub nuts. takes to pop that loose. Sometimes it's hard and it put a lot of pressure on it and when it does you can take and just take a hammer and wrap on the end of that and then usually that will pop it loose. So we're going to take our nuts off again. Then we should be able to pull the whole assembly out in one piece and lay it down so that when you go to reinstall it the chain is running in the same direction Everything's in the same as it was. Because obviously they're worn in that way. Grab that, hold of this, grab the front. We'll pull the whole assembly out and set it aside. So before we take the primary out, we have oil lines, breather lines that go from one side to the other. One, here, one is here off the pump. We're going to have to release that. Pull that line off. Take the clamp off it here so we can pull it through. And the other one here. I can't really get at it there. I'm gonna have to take it off of here. This stuff's probably been on there forever to make it hard to get off. But we cannot pull the, the primary case out until we have that off. to get off there we go now that one will also pull through when I pull the primary off now we've got to unbolt the starter as well 
There's a 7 16 bolt up in there on this side. I need a little longer extension. That would be a 7 16 in there. Try to get that out without dropping it down in there. Evidently it's got a bunch of washers on it because it's a little bit long so not to forget that when it goes together. And on these particular models the other bolt for the starter is actually up in here on the inside not on the outside like most of the others all are so for a few years here they made them this way. And I'll put that starter bolt with my other starter bolt. So as not to forget. And now our starter is completely loose, um, independent. So we can go ahead now and start taking apart this and get our primary case off. So now we're gonna go ahead and take our primary off. The first thing we're gonna do is cut our safety wire here. We always have on these nuts. Allen bolt up out of the front here. A little awkward spot to get at without taking the whole shifter assembly off, but I don't want to do that. Also need to get the little key out of here. Maybe get a, bit, a little tap, a little screwdriver should hopefully pop out. Here we go. It's just popped out. Okay. Those two, those two, two in the front, those two. My oil lines are disconnected. My starter is disconnected. So this whole assembly should come out. I'll take this off before it gets wrecked. Okay, we have to be a little bit careful because we have to get the oil lines out. Under there, we'll pop that off. That almost looks like it's loose there as it is. Ah, damn thing. Oh. He's only one. One on there. What we need to do is figure out if it's a primary case problem or, or a transmission oil seal problem. So. I think what I'm going to do is 
take this off. Left hand thread, people. Now, looking at it, So now that we've pulled the sprocket off, we can see that it's actually leaking right straight down through there at the bottom of that seal. So it's, it's pouring out here around this and leaking straight down. So we do have a transmission problem. So we'll have to have to deal with that. Here with the flashlight, you can see the oil leaking straight straight out there, right out of this area, coming down here. So we definitely have a problem there. Also looks like it's leaking around that seal as well. Okay, so as of now, looks like we're going, we're going in deep now. All right. Now we're going to start with getting the linkage disconnected. So we got to undo the clutch cable and unhook it from the housing in there. Take a 916 and unlock that. There we go. And that's out of the way. So now that we've got the clutch cable unhooked, I'm just going to take these excess wires and I'm just going to hook them around the, uh, the clutch adjuster bolt. There we go. That'll keep that out of the way. Now we should be able to pull our transmission out. What I'm going to do is go along in the bottom of the transmission. There's four, four bolts that bolts the bottom plate that holds the transmission to the frame. We're going to undo those four bolts and over on the kicker side, underneath the kicker cover, there's another bolt that holds the transmission down to the frame. So we're going to undo that one on the far side, these four, and I should be able to slide the transmission right out, hopefully without taking the oil tank and disturbing that and any of the wiring and such. Okay, so we're going to look down here in this area and there's a tab that comes up on the frame and bends over. That tab is where the 916 bolt, generally 916, depends what somebody's somebody has put in there. So we'll do this on the other four plate bolts. Check our wiring here to make sure everything's out of the way so we can slide the tranny right out. Here we go. Or 516 bolt out of there. Now we know the transmission is disconnected from the frame. Always watch out for other things that may be connected to it. I see this one here, it has the uh, a brake line. This one has a brake line connected to it. So we'll have to remember that when we go to reinstall. Brake line freed. Push that down so it doesn't get caught up when we try to pull the transmission out. Let me get that. I'll go around and work on on the opposite side. Now we'll get these ones out. I don't really need another another one for the bottom. And usually the trickiest one is this one back here. 
to get out, depending on if it's been shortened up or not. Sometimes guys will shorten them up if the threads are good in the frame, but because they don't want to come out. So you sometimes have to put that this particular bolt into the transmission plate uh, before you pull the transmission solid. So we'll see what happens here. No, it will come loose, but it won't come won't come out of the hole, out of the plate, because it's hitting the transmission. So I'm hoping that, yeah, we're free there. Okay, we're gonna try to move it a little bit. We gotta get the other that other bolt in there. That stove bolt has gotta come out. Here we go. We popped her out. Put that with the other ones. All my tranny bolts in one place. All right. There we are. There we are. Now before we put it back in, we'll clean all this area and make it nice and clean. But again, be mindful of what sort of things. The brake lines are hooked to different pedestals and uh, where your oil lines are running. But I think we're gonna talk John into sealing the primary case if I can. And uh, he won't have to put up with these in and out and all that kind of crap anymore. Um, We'll make the, make the primary case completely sealed on its own. All right, looking good. So if you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, ring the bell, do those things, it helps us to grow. And uh, follow us along on this series of this four speed transmission rebuild, which we're gonna have to do, looks like from top to bottom. So stick with us.